You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. So I'm personally thrilled to this day to count Blair uh, as a great mentor and as a friend. Uh, so it's a tremendous honor to introduce, uh, ladies and gentlemen, our 2014 Joseph Sullivan Award recipient, Blair Hall. Blair? We got pictures. Thank you, Steve. I think Steve is one of the most talented up-and-comers in the options industry, and uh, I'm pleased to have worked with him for a number of years. Um, first, uh, um, I especially want to thank uh, my significant other for being here, Gail Severin, uh, my good friends Warren Langley and Jim Lotus, who traveled to, to be here, and Jerry Herbert also. And I'm uh, really pleased to have my daughter Megan Hull here. I have known or, or worked with 10 of the 12 recipients of the Joe Sullivan Award, and I respect each and every one of them, and I'm humbled uh, to be in their presence. The, uh, today I'm going to talk about market efficiency and leveling the playing field. I'm going to talk about how we move from open outcry to automation, and we created a much more efficient system. I'm also going to talk about the problem we have in terms of um, investor uh, perceptions of our markets and how we need to change our market structure uh, to improve uh, volume and liquidity for everybody. And then finally, I'm going to say if we can improve our, our, the efficiency of our system, we will have the opportunity to create new products such as active ETFs, which will level the playing field for all investors. In 77, I started on the Pacific Stock Exchange. And my first reflection was, I said, when I came down to the floor and I saw all the paper on the floor, I said, oh my god, this place is going to be eliminated in about a year. We can easily computerize all of this. And I said, I better make a lot of money very quickly. Well, my vision was correct, but my timing was off by about 25 years. The, um, the early days, uh, exchanges were sort of interesting. They, they tried to prohibit automation. I remember at least two or three times being asked to remove my computers from the floor. And, but by 1977, they'd actually let you have computers on the floor. In fact, they were trying to then encourage you to provide liquidity in a new product called SPX. And they'd actually, we, we actually would have screens that would show our bids and offers. But we couldn't get the direct feed. They wouldn't allow us to get the direct feed, so we actually had to have a person look at the Quotron and push the button up or down, and we called that person the human ticker. The, uh, uh, Tom Petterfee and I were competitors, but we were also allies. He would fight one battle to automate a process, and I would support him. And then I would fight the next battle, and he would support, uh, support me. But it was great teamwork that uh, I think pushed, pushed the industry in the right direction. Um, in the late 1990s, Hull Trading Company considered starting our own exchange. We hired counsel, we went down and visited the SEC. But fortunately, we were, I guess, not as, we weren't as patient as David Krell. And David Krell filed for the ISC, and, and my hat is off to David Krell for beginning the automation in, in, in here in the United States. But I think the, uh, this whole thing of moving from open outcry to automation was clearly made it a more efficient system, and, and, it, and it clearly it leveled the playing field, because the floor trader had time and place advantage over the average investor, and the average investor now had a better, better opportunity. But we have a problem now. We have investors having this perception that it's a rigged game. 
and that there's front running. So, and, and that's occurred because of the flash crash, it's, it's occurred because of numerous glitches, the annual OIC glitch that <laughs> happened with New York Stock Exchange this time. Um, and also two books, Dark Pools and uh, Flash Boys. So what caused, what caused this issue? What caused high frequency trading? Well, I think there's only one thing that caused high frequency. Well, there may be, I, I, I'm actually gonna say one thing. There's one big issue that caused it and created the problem that we have today, and that's Reg NMS. Reg NMS was well intended, it, but it created 13 exchanges and 45 dark pools. Now, for a player, whether it's a hedge fund, a market maker, in order to connect to these numerous facilities, I estimate it takes $400,000 a month just to connect and be able to do intermarket sweep orders. So what, um, what, what intended to create, it, it, it didn't, it actually did the opposite. It actually created op, comp, uh, competition between exchanges but it created an oligopoly with market makers and high frequency trading firms. Now we may be angry at Flash Boys, the book Flash Boys by Michael Lewis. And he obviously had many omissions and, uh, and, and numerous errors. But I think his message was spot on. The cost of 13 exchanges 45 dark pools. The vendors of the FPGAs and microwave vendors, the high frequency trading firms, and the added regulation that we have becomes a tax on everyone in this room and more importantly to every investor in the country. I think, it's, I think our, our national market system is similar to our national healthcare system. We spend 15% of our gross domestic product on, on health care in this country, where the average industrialized country spends 7%, yet our outcomes rank 28th. I look at our national market system to trade securities, options, and futures to be working into a, as inefficient as our national health care system. Here are five possible remedies that I see for our current situation. The first, the SEC has proposed a number of things that I think have some merit. First is, is a minimum price of, of a half a cent improvement in dark pools. The second is nickel, a minimum ticks of nickels for, uh, for low cap stocks. And the third is a pilot to consider no make or taker pricing. I think each of these have merit. The second one is the second possible remedy is Manoj Narang at TradeWorks has su suggested that suggested that we have a, a, a um, no lock markets. He says that a two cent wide market is worse than a one cent wide market, and a, and a one cent wide market is worse than a, than a zero a zero market. So you could really he he says that a zero spread is is appropriate, and we should just simply just say lock markets are okay. The third, the third proposal comes from Tom Petterfee, who, who wants to have a 20 to 350 second microsecond, um, millisecond um, random delay for take orders, but not necessarily for make, for make orders. Uh, I think this has some merit. The fourth is Chris Haymeyer has, has suggested that we create something called the Wiki Exchange. This would use open source software and would be a not-for-profit exchange. He feels that we've, we can come full circuit, circle. We started with exchanges that were not-for-profit. We went through for-profit exchanges and he believes we can come back to a not-for-profit exchange. The fifth solution is my solution. And it's a simple solution. I believe you need to rescind 
Rule 611, the order protection rule. The rule that said we can't have trade throughs. I went back and I thought, I tried to figure out, well, how did Reg NMS, why was it created? What happened? What was the environment? And I looked back and I sat, found out that the commission voted three to two in favor of it. And I, last week I talked to Paul Atkins and Cynthia Glassman, who were the dissenters in that vote. And they wrote a 45-page dissent on why we should not enact Reagan MS. And here's a few things that they had to say, a couple, couple lines. He said, they said, we believe that Reg NMS turns back commission policy regarding competition and innovation and sets up roadblocks for our markets. The second thing they said is they said that is far from enhancing competition, we believe that Reg NMS will have anti-competitive effects. I am just amazed when I hear the media, I hear Congress, I hear the regulators and even some people in our industry say the HFTs are the, are the real enemies and in fact, or, or the exchanges are the enemies. They are the villains. When in fact, it was, they are playing by the rules that were set up. What we have to look at is how did we establish the rules that created the mess we're in? But I think that if we're able to do this, if we're able to create a, a more efficient system, we'll, able be, we'll be able to have new products that will actually enhance the growth of our industry. And those products might be active ETFs. If we could have a few active ETFs that could outperform, I think the hedge funds would be forced to come up with active ETFs that would actually um, provide competition in that space. In conclusion, we, we moved from open outcry uh, to automation and created a more efficient system. Now we need to change our market structure that will restore confidence uh, to our industry. And if we do so, we'll be able to create more products that will actually give the small investor an equal opportunity. And several of those active ETFs could be option ETFs, which would bring liquidity and volume to the option, to a consolidated options industry. If we work toward creating a more efficient market system and a level playing field, this industry will grow dynamically in the future. Thank you very much for this honor. Thank you for listening. The preceding program was a production of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider or via questions at the options insider.com.